the number one rule of consulting is not to be confused with the old saying, which by the way, isn't true, that the client is always right. The client is not always right. Revealed, how a crazy idea exploded my consulting business and helped me discover the number one rule for consulting success. I'm Ken Newhouse. Building a profitable business isn't only about generating leads and driving sales. It's about who we are and what we're made of. It's about finding the most effective methods to persuade, inspire, and ignite the imagination of others so you can succeed in business. If you're a member of the new breed of entrepreneur, I invite you to join the quest as we reveal the newest and most effective methods you can use to get clients now. And if you're like me and if you're like my most successful clients, you work really, really hard to provide not only the best experience, but the best results for your clients, which is probably one of the best ways to increase the chances that they're going to say yes to working with you, whether it's a brand new client or it's an existing client doing additional work with you. You know, there's always cause to celebrate when a client says yes and inks the deal. So today we're actually going to invest a few minutes to talk about how to get more of your clients to say yes and give you money and do it in a way that's not salesy. And then after you've added that priceless gem to your toolbox, we're going to reveal the number one rule for consulting success, which is actually the flip side of the same coin. Now, again, if you're like me, you probably cringe at the thought of being seen as salesy by a client or by the marketplace in general. In fact, everybody knows that being able to sell more effectively without coming across as, you know, high pressure used car salesman is not only a highly valuable skill set to have in your professional toolkit, it's vital to your success. And so learning how to sell without selling is actually more high level art than it is a science. And it's an ability that doesn't include new and powerful sales scripts or subliminal persuasion skills. Now, before I give you the number one rule for consulting success, I want to prime the pump. I want to actually take a brief look at this thing called selling because I think there's a lot of misconceptions about it. You know, if you think about it, selling is a prerequisite for all the success you're going to create in life, no matter what it is that you do. You know, regardless of the type of business you have, selling is for you. And selling impacts every person, every single person on this planet. Your ability or inability to sell, persuade, negotiate, and convince others affects every single area of your life, and it will, by itself, determine if your business excels and thrives or struggles to survive. You know, we're in the heart of the new COVID economy, and if you don't know how to sell, you're in serious trouble. No matter your title, whether you're the CEO, the lead consultant, or, you know, the low person on the totem pole, you will at some point have to convince others of what you believe in. You're going to have to convince them that your position is for them and it's in their best interest. So let me ask you a question. Can you sell that belief, that idea, that concept, your dreams to someone else? Can you do it successfully? Now, my guess is that your answer to that is a resounding yes. So let me ask you another question. What percentage of the time are you doing it? What percentage of the time are you getting people to say yes to your proposition? Now, I ask those questions because your ability to sell effectively and consistently impacts you in ways that will determine the future of not only your business, but your relationships, your finances, of your life. So to create a solid foundation on which we can build today, it's critical that you understand that selling is used every day by every single person on this planet. No one is excluded. That includes your children, your spouse, your coworkers, your employees, your vendors, your clients. You know, you're busy trying to sell your client on why they should hire you and give you money. And they're busy trying to convince themselves or sell themselves on why they should wait. So if you're not able to sell them, they're going to sell themselves. They're going to persuade themselves not to ink the deal with you and do business with you. That's why it's critically important that you understand as it relates to the number one rule for consulting success, that selling is not a job or career. It's not a way to manipulate other people. Selling is a way of life. Not selling as an used car salesman, as I mentioned before, but rather selling as an art form of the highest degree in skill. That's the way I see selling. That's the way I want to teach you about selling. And my guess is that you're already in agreement with that. Now think about this for a second. Your ability to do well in life, your ability to survive, your ability to prosper, your ability to create your financial scene, you know, the lifestyle that you've accumulated and built for yourself depends solely on your ability to sell others on those things that you believe in. I'm not talking about just selling products and services here. I'm talking about you selling yourself. Yes, you have to sell yourself. You have to persuade and convince yourself as well as sell and persuade and convince others on the things that you want to do in life. Again, I think this is fair to say that everybody knows that if you want your business in your life to be successful, you need to know how to negotiate. You know, you're going to get that dream client. You're going to build that amazing company you've envisioned for yourself. You're going to buy that dream house one day. You're going to sell a house one day. And that means that you have to know how to negotiate. 
And in business, you have to know how to get your client's agreement on important points consistently throughout your business life, throughout your career. So at its most basic, the ability to get others to like you, that's selling. The ability to get others to work with you and support you, that's selling. The ability to get people to want to please you and make you feel good and do things for you, well, that's selling as well. So the reality of this is that selling is utterly unavoidable because it's an important skill set that determines how well you're going to survive. Selling is not a job and it's not manipulative like most people think. You know, I often hear, you know, I don't want my clients to see me or view me as a salesperson. You know, I said it once and I'm going to say it again. Selling is a way of life. If we look at Merriam-Webster Dictionary, it says that selling is the action of persuading or influencing another to some course of action or to the acceptance of something. Selling is the act of persuading, ethically persuading others. So ask yourself a simple question. In the course of your business, do you work to actively persuade clients to hire you and act on the recommendations you give them? Obviously, you want your recommendations to be acted on so that they can get good results. They can get great results. If you've done that, you were selling. You know, when you were in college or graduate school, heck, even in high school for that matter, did you ever try to convince your teacher to give you a better grade? If you did that, you were selling. If you've ever tried to convince your kids to study and work hard, or like in my case, with the champ, with Hannah Ray, train excessively hard so that we can get you into the college of your choice on a scholarship for soccer. All that, on my part and on your part, that was selling. The act of persuading or influencing someone else. I'm Ken Newhouse, and I'm going to welcome you to episode 396 of the Get Clients Now podcast. And now that you understand that selling isn't unprofessional, that selling is an art form to be mastered and vital to your success as a consultant, it's time to pull back the curtain and get a closer look at the number one rule of consulting success. So as we look at the number one rule for consulting success, first and foremost, it's important. It's critical. It is absolutely essential that you understand, no matter what type of business you have or what type of consulting that it is that you do, you want to always, always, always agree with the client. Always. This is, without question, the single most important, most basic, and most commonly violated rule in all of consulting. This one rule is violated more than any others and by itself is responsible for more people losing deals and not getting clients than anything else. Now, I think it's fair to say that I've had not only the good fortune, but you know, somewhat of an advantage in the fact that I've not only interviewed, but I've been able to work with more than a half dozen of the world's leading consultants. I'm talking about David A. Fields, Alan Weiss, Mike Darrington, Bob Berg, Michael Zapersky, and many, many others. And I've learned that violating this rule is the single biggest mistake consultants make when communicating with clients. Now, think about this. If you want agreement with clients, you have to be agreeable. If I want agreement with Eric, a prospective client, I have to be agreeable with Eric in order to get agreement from him. I can hear you probably screaming at your iPhone right now, so let me make something clear right out of the gate. The number one rule of consulting is not to be confused with the old saying, which by the way isn't true, that the client is always right. The client is not always right. Well, Ken, you're confusing me. You're telling me to be agreeable and agree with my client, but the client is not always right. I think everybody knows that old saying's been around for, you know, as long as I can remember, probably as long as you can remember as well. But here's the news flash. Clients are not always right. And if you've been in business for any length of time, you know exactly what I'm talking about here. The important point that I want you to get is this. Right or wrong, agree. Your client is right or wrong, agree. Agree as you're inking the contract. Don't disagree and kill the contract. Agree while you're in negotiations. Don't disagree. Being agreeable is necessary, it is critical, it is absolutely paramount for you to get an agreement as in a signed contract with your client. You can't expect someone to agree with you and accept your proposal if you're disagreeing with them. That almost never happens. Human beings are attracted to people, ideas, and products that represent the things they're already in agreement with. Think of your closest friends. These are the people who share and probably most closely agree with your core beliefs. Think about your favorite family members. You know, we all have them. Yes, you have them. Don't lie. You have them just like I do. These are people that we agree with. These are the people that we spend more of our time with. These are the people we want to see over the holidays. These are the people that agree with you. Just like me, there are people in life that you've got the most in common with. And as a result, you're in agreement with most. And it's people like this that you want to spend most of your time with. People who agree move toward one another. People who disagree move apart. But what about that old saying that opposites attract? It's nonsense. Can be further from the truth. Opposites do not attract and definitely don't attract in a consultant-client relationship. So imagine this scenario, right? This will become instantly clear to you. 
you've listened to me, you're gonna deploy this, and in the process of trying to win that new client, you're really careful to put the number one rule of consulting success into action, which means that you're focused on being, quote unquote, agreeable. What about your competitors? What about the people who are bidding on this same opportunity? Nope, they're wrapped up in their egos. So when the client says something they know is wrong, even if it's minor, what do they do? They point it out. Their incessant need to prove their intellect gets in the way of winning the deal, of winning the contract, of inking the deal. But that's not you, because you know that being more closely aligned with the client, agreeing, you're in a better position than your competitor, the one who isn't in agreement. No matter how small their disagreements are, disagreeing with a client is a recipe for disaster, and more oftentimes than not, it's a deal killer. Disagreement with your prospective client or an existing client, no matter how small it might be, even if it's not related to what you're doing as far as helping them in their business, is oftentimes a recipe for disaster, and it's a deal killer. Like-minded people are attracted to one another, and liking others is born out of agreement. I like you. Why? Because I agree with you at some level. And when there's not enough agreement between two parties, there's no agreement. You get it? When there's not enough agreement between two parties, there is zero agreement. This is the reason partnerships fail. This is the reason marriages break up. And when all else is equal or close to being equal, the main reason you don't have clients inking the deal with you versus the competition, disagreement. You know, most people think it takes two people to resolve a conflict. Not true. The truth is that it takes one person to agree and there would be no conflict because for there to be conflict in existence, there has to be two people who disagree. I agree, so the disagreement is over. And so everything that I've told you means one simple thing. You're the person in charge now. Do you want a signed contract? You got to give agreement to the client before agreement and a signed contract specifically can be achieved. Even when a client is making ridiculous, crazy claims or even exaggerations, agree with them. I'm with you, Susan. I can see that, Susan. I understand, Susan. And just because you think what the client is saying is ridiculous, it doesn't mean that she thinks it's ridiculous. Let me take this a step further. If she thinks something's black and you think it's white, hey, you're both right. Now, if you're like a lot of consultants today, you want to take your belief system and shove it down her throat. But the truth is, it's black to her. If she thinks it's black and you want her to work with you, you need to be able to see from her viewpoint, hey, how could this be black? If the client thinks he should wait and think about it and you disagree, what's he going to do? He's going to solidify. He's going to become difficult. His objection is going to become valid and he will wait and you will never get him to ink the deal. Now, admittedly, you know, the number one rule for consulting success sounds rudimentary and basic, but don't make the mistake of underestimating the power of this rule. In a coming episode, I'm actually going to teach you how to use this rule during the process of negotiation and actually closing the deal. So until then, remember, the number one rule for consulting success, always, always, always agree with your client. Look, if you simply agree with the client who says, you know, I think I should wait and think through this, that, you know, quote unquote, thinking about it would be a good thing right now. And then let him know that you agree that number one, thinking is important, that doing the right thing is important, that taking time is the right thing, he's gonna be more attracted to you. He's gonna to move towards you, maybe not physically, but definitely mentally, which is gonna radically increase your chances of getting the contract signed in this guy as a paying client. And then once you've agreed with this guy, once you've agreed with the prospective client, then you can move ahead. Then you can explain that his mode of thinking, A, is not gonna change the fact that your plan is a perfect fit for him and his company, B, that he can afford it, C, that your company has his best interests in mind, and D, making the decision now is actually going to put him in a better position. So agree first and then work on closing the deal. Agree with your clients first because doing so is going to bring them to another level of thinking. It's going to open them up to your suggestions. So for instance, the beautiful and talented Lisa wanted another dog. It was about three years ago that her dog Dallas, the Chihuahua, took the dog over to the vet for a routine visit. And she called me just hysterical on the phone saying, you know, they killed him. I'm like, what are you talking about? She said they killed Dallas. The veterinarian's office killed my dog. Routine visit, and I get a dead dog back. Bring a healthy dog in, I get a dead dog back. True story, by the way. About three weeks ago, Lisa comes home and she's like, you know, I want to get this pit bull puppy. She whips out the picture, and I'm like, no way. I am dead set against it. Not going to happen. So what does she do? She uses the number one rule of consulting success on me. Always, always, always agree. She said, maybe you're right. What was I thinking? It's crazy. And with a raised eyebrow, she said, you know, the last thing we need is another dog. I looked at her and I said, you're agreeing with me? 
Absolutely, Ken. I always <laughs> agree with you. You're right. What was I thinking? We don't need another dog right now. And that's when I said, he is a good looking dog though, isn't he? Done deal. Junior <laughs> is now a member of the family. In the house, lives there now. You get it? Agree. Acknowledge. Make the client right for their thoughts, their ideas, their beliefs. Then move into the close. There is no single rule. No single rule that consultants violate more than the number one rule of consulting success, the rule of agreement. I want you to understand that agreeing is the road to more clients and more lucrative deals for your business. I want you to drill this and practice this because if you're like me, particularly in our line of work, you probably disagree with clients more than you should simply to satisfy your craving to be quote unquote right. So remember, you can't deposit being right in the bank. But having said that, let me say this. You never, ever, ever, ever want to compromise your morals or your beliefs or what you know to be right. You don't want to be right if it means making your client wrong. What you want is a signed agreement from the client because that is money in the bank. If you know someone who's a consultant or does any type of consulting work with clients, I'd encourage you to pass along this conversation to them. And I want to thank you in advance for doing so. Additionally, I'd like to recommend a handful of other episodes, especially if you're a consultant, your work requires consulting with clients, or you're thinking about becoming a consultant, or this conversation has been useful to you. I want to encourage you to check those out. One of those is episode 344 with my good friend, Frank Soma. As everybody knows, coronavirus, COVID-19 has literally changed almost everything about how consultants acquire new clients. And in this particular conversation, Soma revealed NLP communication methods that stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming. I'm sure you already knew that. But he revealed methods that'll help you stand out in a crowded and confused marketplace. And yes, the marketplace is confused by a lot at this particular moment in time. And so when you listen to the conversation and deploy the methods that Soma gives you, your consulting practice will not only survive these troubled times, but it'll be able to thrive. And it's a wonderful compliment to today's conversation with David Fields. Again, that's episode 344. I'd also recommend episode 388 with my dear friend, Mike Darrington. You know, among Darrington's many, many accomplishments as a consultant, I think the one that sticks out the most for me is how he brought DuPont's sports nutrition sector back from the brink of insolvency, restructured and built it into one of the industry's most profitable companies. Darrington has a long track record of helping huge corporations like DuPont, as well as small independently owned businesses become profitable again, which has earned him the nickname, the man with the Midas touch. And yes, he loves to be called the man with the Midas touch. And during our conversation, Darrington revealed the business success system that never fails, helps you get clients now and make more sales instantly, which by the way, got rave reviews and feedback from members of the Get Clients Now Nation of Fans. So episode 388 for that. And then lastly, I'd like to recommend one of our more recent shows, which was episode 392, The Ultimate Guide for Transforming Your Podcast into a Trojan Horse for Acquiring High Value Consulting Clients with me, your host, Ken Newhouse. Now, if you're like me and if you're like my most successful clients, you're always on the lookout for methods you can use to consistently attract high value consulting clients and bring them into your business. I got to tell you, launching a podcast and building it on the framework I've developed over the past four years allows me to say unequivocally that a podcast can be one of the most effective tools you can use to consistently bring high value consulting clients into your practice. So if you're looking to bring more of those high value clients into your consulting practice, which I know you are and do it consistently and do it easier than you can imagine. Yes, this is easier than you can imagine. Go ahead and listen to episode 392, which dovetails perfectly with today's conversation. Now, all those episodes you can find on the KenNewhouse.com website. And remember, we're launching the free membership portal we've been building for you on March 1st, 2021, where you're gonna be able to search the entire library of conversations we've had over the years on a variety of topics that'll help you bring more high value clients into your consulting business and then keep them for a lifetime. Additionally, I want you to remember, the first 100 people to register on March 1st are gonna get a free copy of the updated version of my book, Profitable Again, as well as a copy of my newest book, Profitable Podcast Blueprint, which was the featured topic of episode 392 that I just talked about. Now, when you decide to register for the free membership on KenNewhouse.com, you'll have instant access to each of the conversations I've had with my guests, conversations which are going to be organized by topic, plus you're going to get access to my weekly strategy guide for consultants that'll come out every Wednesday with special resources I think are going to be helpful for you. You'll also get access to the notes from that week's episode, my own personal library, the member cast, and all the free video and audio trainings that'll be available for you on the website. And speaking of amazing content, my guest next week is Chris Filipiak, who, according to my guest today, David Fields, is one of his top students. Filippiak's consulting business helps CEOs in companies ranging in size from one employee, you know, the, the solopreneur, 
to hundreds of employees and helps them build highly successful sales teams. So whether you're a team of one or your sales team has a dozen or more members, Next week's episode with Chris Filipiak is going to reveal several key strategies that can help you increase your sales an average of 172% in less than 90 days, which is absolutely incredible. Now, I got to say, a few of these strategies, I already knew them, but there were a handful of them that were totally new for me. And number three, absolutely blew me away. So join me next week for a conversation with Chris Filipiak as we discuss strategies for building a highly successful sales team so you can get clients now and make your business more profitable than ever. All right, I'll see you guys next Tuesday. Our objective with this podcast is to help you and your business stand out in the marketplace by crystallizing your messaging, marketing, and communications. On behalf of the whole Ken Newhouse team, thanks for listening.